Hi everyone. Welcome to this time together on the week beginning Sunday, the 14th of March. It's the fourth Sunday in Lent and here in the United Kingdom it's also Mothering Sunday. Thank you for joining me and I hope that as you watch today, whatever time it may be with you, you know God's peace with you and love for you. In our psalm today, it is declared that we have to give thanks to God. Why? Because God's love endures forever. And so with grateful hearts, let us raise our voices in praise as we open our worship with hymn 181 for the beauty of the earth. Let us pray. Gracious God, Parent, Son and Spirit, with hearts filled with thankfulness we come, lifting up our hearts and voices in praise and worship, trusting that wherever we are watching or listening, you are near. For you are above us and before us, beside us and within us, and love us with a strong and binding love that will last forever. A love that goes in search and finds the lost. A love that reaches out and hugs the broken. A love that turns tables and demands justice. A love that carries a cross to a hill on Golgotha and is lifted up that we might know peace and healing and wholeness and life eternal with you and each other and creation and ourselves. As we listen, sing and reflect today, we pray that we would open ourselves to you and that into our fears 
our brokenness, our divisions, our rebellion. You, O oh God, may speak. And in your speaking, we may hear and accept the good news that you love us. See the new life that you offer and bring and receive your deep and inexplicable peace as we trust in your unfailing, enduring and unending love that gives us so many reasons to have hope and belief. So be it. Amen. Morning everyone. This morning's reading comes from John 3 verses 14 to 21. As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the desert, in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to be its judge, but to be its saviour. Those who believe in the Son are not judged, but those who do not believe have already been judged, because they have not believed in God's only Son. This is how the judgment works. The light has come into the world, but people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds are evil. All those who do evil things hate the light and will not come to the light, because they do not want their evil deeds to be shown up. But those who do what is true come to the light in order that the light may show that what they did was in obedience to God. Amen.
You know, there's lots that you and me could chat about today. We could think about the context in which our Bible reading occurs, that John presents it as a conversation between Jesus and a Pharisee called Nicodemus, who sought out Jesus under the cover of darkness in order to ask his questions. We could think about the way in which Nicodemus is presented as quite a literal man, finding it difficult to fathom what Jesus means in this talk about being born again in order to see God's kingdom and live God's way. And we could unpack what the significance of the bronze serpent on the pole being lifted up in the desert by Moses actually meant. It's a story from the Old Testament at Numbers 21 when we hear of God's people in the wilderness wandering, tired, exhausted, moaning and groaning and then believing that God has sent slithering snakes their way in order to poison and punish and kill. All of these things are interesting and important not least the latter there, about how we read our Bibles and how we come to understand for ourselves what is the nature of God. But it's not those verses so much I want to focus on, but those that come after. For John 3.16 is probably the best known verse in the entire Bible. Go on, say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It's a powerful statement. But there's a danger with passages that we know so well that we just... Now let them go in one ear and out the other without really letting the meaning and the significance 
soak in. And so let me slow things down and let me speak as you listen. For God so loved the world. Did you hear it? wasn't out of duty or self-interest that God gave his son. The motivation was love. Love for the world, the cosmos, the entire creation. And the initiative was all God's. There's a wonderful verse in the first letter of John that says we love God because God first loved us. The initiative was God. Not acting for God's sake but for our sakes that we might know, receive eternal life. Not an ending life but full lives, lives lived within the presence of God. What a gift. And John says that we can receive that eternal life. When we look to Jesus, Jesus lifted up high on the cross. And in seeing that sign and that image, Believe not only that God loves us, but that God came and met us and meets us in all our brokenness and suffering. Not turning away, not running away, not abandoning us, but coming to suffer and die with us. And that's what verse 17 makes really clear, especially in the message translation. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help, to put the world right again. And yet you and I know that things are far from right. On this, the 80th anniversary of the Clydebank Blitz, war in our world still ravages and inflicts suffering on innocence. The horror and pain that unfolded in Dumblain is still felt sorely 25 years on. Unjust systems create poverty and inequality. Prejudice and fear contribute to racism and oppression. Hate and extremism lead to violence. And lack of care for creation has caused an emergency which will affect the poorest in our world first. Add to that a global pandemic and we know that none of this is good. None of these things speak of love. And isn't it the truth that sometimes life can be so bewildering and confusing, sometimes downright painful and hard. And like you, I put my hands up and confess I don't understand. But this I also confess. That even in the cold light of reality of all of that, it is a God who loves us. A God who has not abandoned us 
a God who has given us the freedom to choose to work with him in order to bring good. For in Jesus we are not condemned, but set free. Free that we might choose to believe and live in ways that are a blessing and bring light. Every time we're quicker to forgive those who wrong us and slow to judge. When we help those who need us regardless of who they are. When we love those who mothers ignore. When we join our voices with those who long to be heard. When we call out racism and sexism and homophobia and sectarianism and bigotry in all its guises. When we welcome those on the edge. When we care for this beautiful world we call home. When we pray, pray hard and expectantly for God's kingdom to come. These things are good. These things speak of love. And so we have a choice, a choice to believe that in the midst of the mess and the brokenness and the disconnect that God loves us, that we are not alone and that death will not have the last word. Because in Christ we are united and bound in God's eternal love that is wide and welcoming and inclusive and offered to everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. May you hear it. May you believe it. May it make a difference in your life. Let us pray. Holy God, who loves us with a patient, gentle, protective and fierce love, who gives us our head and heart to choose our own way, all the while longing that we might pick paths that are life-giving, we thank you for your ways that are good, for your promises that are sure, and for your love that can be trusted. It's the reason why we can come to you honestly in prayer, especially on days like today, when it can be so hard to find the words, in light of anniversaries and special days and evil acts that shock and scare. And so to you, who hears us and holds us in our joy and in our pain, we pray for soon-to-be mums and new mums, for longing to be mums, and those women for whom it did not happen for struggling mums and worried mums, for those who grieve the loss of a child at any stage or age, for foster mums and adopted mums, for step mums and all women who love like a mother, whether they have children or not. 
may each know their worth today and believe that they are deeply loved. We pray for the children at whatever age whose mums have died, whose mums are ill, whose mums they never knew, whose mums were cruel and cold and pray that you would wrap your arms around them, hold them tightly and heal them in your love. And on this lockdown mothering Sunday, when many cannot visit or hug mums and grannies and aunties and godmothers as they would like, we bring their names and faces before you and ask your blessing upon their lives as we also offer our prayers in the silence for those whom we know are in need today. God who loves us with a patient, gentle, protective and fierce love. Hear these and all the prayers of our hearts that we offer in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. And so let us travel into a new week, trusting and believing that no matter our joy or our pain, we are loved and known and held by the maker of heaven and earth the blessing of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forevermore. Amen.